Ever since the moment that our universe was created by the Big Bang more than 13.7 billion years ago, scientists have never stopped searching for answers in the process of our formation. For all the mysteries that have emerged regarding the black void that seems to surround us, that did not stop our minds from imagining the most terrifying aliens, TV shows, and science fiction concepts. Yet, as scientists venture on into the void day by day, they are only shedding more light on what is out there in the vastness of space. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at some of the latest advancements in the field of space exploration. Eerie sounds emitted between Saturn and its moon, Enceladus. We all know that the Earth and our moon's relationship is pretty much gravitational. The moon affects our tides, for example, but that is about as exciting as it gets. Recently, however, scientists have uncovered that Saturn and its sixth largest moon, Enceladus, have some strange bond, observable through an eerie sound emitted between them despite being thousands of miles away from each other. Detected by the Cassini Saturn orbiter, astronomers monitored wave signals with the aim of analyzing different energy levels surrounding the surface of the gas giant. As the Cassini orbiter circled closer to the target planet, scientists discovered patterns created by high-energy plasma, a very hot, highly charged form of gas being passed between Saturn and its moon Enceladus. Plasma is the fourth state of matter, solid to liquid to gas to plasma, so it means it must by nature carry the most energy. Curious as to the significance of these signals, experts realized upon further examination that the plasma patterns resembled those of wave sounds, and thus decided to convert the data into audio files which could be listened to. What they discovered next was apparently a whooshing sound like that of a jet passing over your head. This is the first time that any such energy signals have been recorded between these two celestial beings, and it seems as though the waves exchanged between Saturn and Enceladus travel directly along magnetic field lines, very similar to an electrical circuit flow of energy. Further information from the research team using the Radio Plasma Wave Science Machine found more electromagnetic signals in the audio frequency range, which prove a strong yet constantly changing interaction between Saturn and Enceladus. Enceladus itself as a moon differs to ours. It is fully immersed in Saturn's magnetic field and is geologically active. Its surface is characterized by being icy yet with hydrothermal activity, spewing water vapor and icy particles which then fill its surrounding atmosphere. While a few other planets and moons are thought to also have liquid water oceans beneath an icy shell like this one, Enceladus is the only one where water from beneath its crust is sprayed into space, where our spacecrafts can sample it. All these discoveries just about Enceladus and its relationship with Saturn go to show just how much there is to learn about our neighboring planets with whom we share the Sun, and that discoveries in all corners of space are still being made every day. Enceladus may have ocean currents like we see around Antarctica. At first glance, pictures of Saturn's moon Enceladus reveals a topography not unlike a pile of wrinkled bedsheets. The icy white surface of the lunar satellite is unlike our own earthy one because of the apparent lack of pitted, mottled craters caused by passing space debris. Instead, Enceladus is crisscrossed with jagged, wrinkle-like structures that reveal the icy landscape of the Moon that harbors a similarity with our own home planet, a vast, salty ocean. Unlike our own seven seas, however, Enceladus has one globe-spanning and entirely subsurface ocean. Furthermore, this space ocean is warmer towards the core of the planet and colder near its surface, as its temperature is regulated by the planet's icy surface. It is also far, far deeper than Earth's oceans, at over 30 kilometers deep as opposed to our three and a half kilometer deep seas. But while there are many differences, there are a few key similarities, among them their shared salinities and currents. Earthbound scientists have studied these currents in the only environment that most closely mimics Enceladus, that's Antarctica. 
Due to the large but rapidly declining polar ice caps that cover the Southern Ocean, the water temperatures are similarly regulated. The currents in Antarctica are largely caused by and manipulated by wind and lunar gravity, but they are also influenced by varying degrees of salinity, just as they are on Enceladus. These space currents are propelled around due to the changing levels of density, which are influenced by the amount of salt in the water. As salt water melts near Enceladus's north and south poles, the weight of the water changes and rises and falls accordingly, creating currents. So why are these temperatures and currents and varying levels of salinity on a distant Saturn-based moon so important? According to both the Jet Propulsion Laboratory and NASA, who jointly launched the Cassini space probe to study Enceladus, these oceanic similarities could be key to finding signs of life beyond Earth. The lunar ocean currents could distribute and maintain temperature and saline-based nutrient levels that are vital to sustaining life. NASA space probes discover man-made barrier surrounding Earth. Humankind accidentally protected itself from possibly dangerous cosmic events. An artificial barrier, or bubble as some call it, was found surrounding the Earth. This barrier not only affects weather events in space, but also protects us from dangerous cosmic weather. Human impact on Earth is undeniable, but now we know our technology significantly impacts our outer atmosphere and beyond. As it turns out, the bubble was created by the interaction of man-made technology and space. More specifically, the interaction between high-energy radiation particles in space and man-made radio communications from Earth. The radio waves in question are typically used to communicate with submarines under the ocean's surface and are frequently used in science, engineering and military operations. As these waves work to reach their destination, they can end up reaching out beyond Earth's atmosphere and interacting with external radiation particles in space. Dan Baker from the University of Colorado Laboratory for Atmospheric and Space Physics calls the bubble an impenetrable barrier. This artificial barrier protects Earth from possible dangers like solar flares or coronal mass ejections. All these phenomena can lead to radiation particles entering the atmosphere, which could interrupt our electrical grids and radio wave communications. So how was the barrier discovered? In 2012, a mission was launched with the sole purpose of studying the Van Allen radiation belts. Five years later, in 2017, Scientists were surprised to instead find a low-frequency barrier that stopped dangerous solar discharges from impacting Earth. The barrier, or bubble, also happens to line up with the inner edge of the Van Allen belts. This information has scientists suspecting that the radio waves used in submarine communications, VLF waves, repel radiation particles. If we stopped using VLF waves, the radiation belts would move much closer to Earth's atmosphere. Right now, the radiation belts are further away from Earth than they were in 1960. Scientists have been discussing how this finding shows our impact on space. We have, without a doubt, made an impact on the Earth, but this barrier may be one of the best things that we have done for our planet. Mysterious finger-like features spotted on the Sun not all of the most mysterious parts of space are due to recent discoveries. Some were brought to our attention long ago, but still manage to mystify astronomers and researchers alike. For one of these mysteries at least, it appears that we may finally have some answers. Scientists have long observed solar flares erupting from our sun in great rays of bright energy flaring outward, but in 1999, Strange, darkly colored downflows of energy were also noticed within the flares. These were described as downward-moving dark voids and resembled finger-like projections interspersed within the solar flares. These formations were referred to as supra-arcade downflows and, although it was suspected that their cause might be tied to magnetic reconnection in some way, their origins have remained largely a mystery until now. The research team studying these events carefully analyzed the images of solar flares with the downflows present, taken by NASA's Atmospheric Imaging Assembly on the Solar Dynamics Observatory, 
which records seven different types of images of the Sun's atmosphere every 12 seconds. They then reconstructed three-dimensional simulations of solar flares to compare with the downflow images and came to a surprising realization. What they discovered was that it seems as though most supra-arcade downflows are not a product of magnetic reconnection at all. This process describes the phenomenon of the Sun's magnetic fields being stretched and then snapping back through the flares. But the researchers found that these downflows were much too slow to make this a likely possibility. Astronomer and lead author of the study, Shen Kai Shen, knew that things did not add up when it came to the slow speed of the downflows, saying that this is not predicted by classic reconnection models, which show the downflows should be much quicker. It's a conflict that requires some other explanation. After much study, another explanation was proposed. Rather than magnetic reconnection, it is much more likely that supra-arcade downflows are actually forming as the independent product of the interaction of two fluids with contrasting densities. When this occurs within the plasma scorching off of the sun in a solar flare, an unstable mix is created, resulting in gaps where there is actually an absence of plasma bordering regions of much higher plasma densities. These empty spaces are the supra-arcade downflows that have so puzzled researchers for decades. Even though the answer seems rather simple, it was not so easy to arrive at this conclusion, which was only made possible through the use of three-dimensional simulations of solar flares. These technologies will continue to be used to attempt to peel away the layers of mystery that surround solar flares and its resultant space weather, and potentially reach such an understanding that we could one day be able to forecast solar flares to avoid the worst of its impacts. Essentially, resolving the mystery of supra-arcade downflows was one small drop in the larger pool of solar flare knowledge, but its effects will be felt far and wide in the field as studies are continued. But what do you make of these recent discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.